Well, hello. Hello. I'm Ginger. I'm Dee. And, and this, this is Chatting, Chatting with Chat. Ginger, okay. it's episode 84. 84. 84. You know, I've been watching our old episodes, and one of them was four, and we were like, it's episode four. And we were so excited. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, <laughs> yeah, we, we've, made, we've made it to 84, so thank you for sticking yeah, with us. It's yeah, it's amazing. It's been a lot of fun. Awesome. It right. has been fun. Yeah, yeah, and we hope that it's been helpful. And today yes. we're going to touch on a couple of things that we hope are helpful and maybe yeah. clear up some confusion because mm -hmm. it's hard to know. Mm -hmm. um, but we're talking affidavits and objectives. We are. Yeah. So, so many folks out there wanting to know. So. If you know someone who needs information, share this stuff with them, point them to our videos because yeah. we want to get the word out on how to how to get growing with homeschooling and yeah. that's really not as yeah. heart stopping as one might think. Yeah. 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 So affidavits. Let's affidavits. Start, let's start there. Okay. <laughs> what is an affidavit, D? What is it? Well, in the state of Pennsylvania, <laughs> you do have to have an affidavit, a notarized affidavit. Yes. For your school district every year stating that you are homeschooling yes. and what all does it tell us in this? Okay, so this one, it's backwards of course, but it's in our keys to homeschooling and it's also on homeschoolpennsylvania.org. Um, it's our affidavit. I actually use this every year. You are certainly welcome to print yep. this out. I and use, use that it. too. Yep. So at the top, it just says UK school district. I'm the supervisor. You list your kids and you only list the kids. I was kids. just gonna say school age, school age yes. kids, not all your small little babies. Little babies. So at this point, the compulsory school age is six. Okay. Now, I'm going to put a plug in here for you to go out there and support um, the passing of HB 1938. It is currently in the Education Committee. And we need, if you didn't see the post on our Facebook page, yeah, go back and check go it check out. it out yeah. because it has contact information for the legislators and everything we need to get as many homeschoolers to contact them as possible to say I want this change to the compulsory age back to how it used to be for us and on the other side for the graduating kids who are younger than 18 so go check that bill out please if you have a representative who is a Democrat we need Democrat support uh, that will be extra helpful so if you could get out there and and support the passing of, of hb 1938 that would be great so yep. that being said we're talking about the affidavit mm -hmm. so you're right now right now you're listing children six. on that affidavit who are six, six to 18 that you are homeschooling yes yes yeah. so don't put your babies on there yeah. um and again if you do have someone who's turning six you can wait and hold off because you have until august First to file. So Dan Beasley at HSLDA was suggesting to hold off and see what happens with HB 1938. So we've got to get it moving mm -hmm. out of the Ed Committee. Say, come on, you got to vote on this. So contact your legislators and let's push a little bit. Yep. So anyway, so you're listing your children. And then under that on the affidavit, uh, it just says, you know, we're going to follow the homeschool law. And it lists out the stuff from the homeschool law. Mm -hmm. You can read that also on homeschoolpennsylvania.org. And it says, you know, I'm getting my child immunized or I have exemption. I'm taking care of medical and dental. And then at the end, it does also list a number of things um, relating to crimes that there is no one in the home who has committed these crimes. And then that's what you're signing and um, you have it notarized. So you can create your own affidavit mm -hmm. or you can use this verbatim or you can take it and change it and do with it whatever you want. But that's what an affidavit does. It is but illegal. The easiest legal thing, I, in my opinion, <laughs> you can go to homeschoolpennsylvania.org, mm -hmm. you can click on that affidavit, this one print pops up, yep. and you print it out. Print like, it out and use really, it. Really, yeah. yeah. Um, and so what's important just to remember about this is two things. It does need to be notarized. Yes. And it needs to be filed by August 1st. August 1st. Yes. So if you are a returning homeschool family, meaning that you did homeschool in 2019, 2020, 2020, 2020. That sounded weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> My brain just... You can start counting your days in July, um, but the affidavit needs to be in by August 1st. If you are a brand new homeschool family, you just decided you know what we're doing this this year, you can't start counting your days until you get that affidavit filed. So if you are a let's do some July stuff, I want to get moving, then you're going to want to file your affidavit by July 1st or early on so you right. can start counting your days. That's for brand new homeschool families. 
once you get into this system, it's kind of assumed that you're going to continue mm -hmm. so you can count your days in July, but you gotta have that affidavit in. Everyone has to have it in by August 1st. If you don't wanna count days in July as a new family, that's fine, mm -hmm. but you guys still have to have it in by August 1st, even if you're only gonna start in September right. or right. October or whenever you're going to be doing right. your schooling. So. Right. And if there's yeah. any questions or problems or things that arise with the school district or or whatever, or you, you still have questions about your school district or anything, we are encouraging you to reach out to HSLDA. They are mm -hmm. phenomenal. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the Homeschool Legal Defense yes. Association for yeah. those of you who may not know. Yeah. Yeah, they have, they have if, if a school district is asking you to do something and you're not sure, like you read the law and you're like, I don't, I don't or they give you a form to fill out or, we, we basically say don't ask the school district how you withdraw your child to homeschool because they actually don't know they don't know the law and they don't really know how it goes so you would point people to us to chap or to hslda mm -hmm. to get that information yeah. on yeah. how to get started yeah and then just one more thing on the um on the affidavit we, we already went over the fact that it it talks about medical and dental and immunizations on there when you are filing that affidavit when you've signed it and you're filing it what you're saying is you're attesting to the fact that you have done you're those doing things so there's no need to hand them in along with the affidavit. Yeah, yeah. So I always have my doctors fill out a form, mm -hmm. a physical form, a dental form, whatever. I take those forms and I put them in my file case with all my kids' stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't actually copy those and hand them in with my affidavit. So, um, and those medical, I mean, you're supposed to get done on entry to school, which now is six years old, and sixth grade and 11th grade. And dental is upon entry to school and third grade and seventh grade. So those are the particular times mm -hmm. when you're supposed mm -hmm. to have it done. Now, I know most of us are doing it yearly anyway, right. but that's what's right. in the paperwork. And so just keep that on file in your home, but mm -hmm. it's not necessary to hand that in with the affidavit. It's saying that you are doing oh, yeah. it. That's so, yeah. On this one, on the one that you use here. Now, yeah. if you write your own and it doesn't have that in it, then you would have to hand in yeah. that paperwork. Yeah. But if you use this one, it says, I'm taking care of it. I got it on file right. and that's cool. Great. So when you yeah. hand in your affidavit saying that you're going to homeschool the following school year, you also have to hand in objectives. objectives. Yeah. yeah. So we also have sample objectives we on homeschoolpennsylvania.org and we in do. our keys to homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so objectives, it's just a list by the subjects that are mentioned in the law and what you're going to do. Now, I mean, how did you use to do your objectives? Okay, well, I didn't know any of this when I started homeschooling. <laughs> 20 years ago, <laughs> 20 years ago, uh, I didn't know any of this. And so I actually would get my curriculum. I'd plan out my school year. I'd have my curriculum. I would sit down and I would write out very long objectives based on the curriculum that we were using. And it was very time consuming. It was very stressful. And I, I would always panic because, well, what if we don't get to this? Or what if we don't get to that? Or what if we don't? Yeah. And I, Finally, at some point along the line, it was brought to my attention that that's not actually necessary. Um, so now I just take sample objectives that we have online and I use those exact objectives mm -hmm. for each child, mm -hmm. which this year I only have one, one, one left to go, one, one to go. Oh um, so basically what that is showing is that we're going to make progress in all of these areas, mm -hmm. which we do, mm -hmm. but I don't have to sit and like, Tediously right, write down. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. I did the same thing. So I wrote down all the textbooks and sometimes mm -hmm. I would put on that we were gonna study something, but we never actually did. And then you kinda of be like, Oh no, I, is that yeah, a I thought I was ah. gonna get to it, yeah. Yeah, so uh, and then I realized, well, when we started doing these, I remember um, mm -hmm. the first time we went through it, I was like, Oh goodness, like I don't need to do what I've been doing. So I've changed what I file yeah. with the school district since then. So I'll just read a little sample here. There, there's um, the one that we have is it elementary here and high school here. And literally you can copy and paste this or whatever and just print one out for each of your children and write their names mm -hmm. on it. Like they're identical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Objectives are identical. But um, so like for elementary arithmetic, it says improve computation skills and master new topics is introduced. It doesn't say this year we're doing multiplication. Right. And we're doing division. It, it doesn't even say that. It just says they're going to get better. Or in high school, um, science. Continue to expose students to concepts in science. Read interesting books on scientific topics. It doesn't say we're doing chemistry. It, it doesn't give any specifics. And the law is the same way. It's very general. So these are great. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because I think the key is it's, it doesn't need to be a stressful thing. No, and I think it, really it, it feels the affidavit, the objectives, the requirements, I think there's a lot of confusion surrounding it. And mm -hmm. then it feels very stressful to a lot of moms. Mm -hmm. I meet a lot of moms who are stressed out by it. Um, but no, we want to, we want to obey the law. We want to meet the requirements of the law, but then we want to be able to just enjoy our journey. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, having a more general objective allows you to do that mm -hmm. without getting to the end of the year and saying, I said I was going to do this and oh, I didn't. No. And now what? I mean, I said I was going to do it. We, we didn't get to it or, or something shifted during the mm -hmm. year. So it's mm -hmm. just, it's just much easier. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you're fulfilling what you're doing. Yeah. You're just not yeah. being super specific with it, which is fine. It doesn't say that yeah. you have to be. Yeah. That's why I said we, we're going to obey the yeah. law. We're going to fulfill all the requirements, but, um, I think it doesn't need to be as stressful as yeah. maybe I know I made it in the beginning. Yeah. I made it very stressful. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of freedom yeah. in, in the way that our law is written, mm -hmm. which is really great. And we have to keep working to support it. Like when I mentioned HB 1938, we, make your voice heard. We got to make our voice heard. And when it's time to, you know, introduce something new and a change to the law, we'll do it. We did it in 2014 yeah. and it got passed and it got a little easier for us here in Pennsylvania. And we just keep, That's right. keep on moving in that way. So, um, I just want to remind you again, if you want a paper copy like this, or actually you could get a downloadable copy of the keys to homeschooling. It's on our web page at chatonline.com in the store. You can get download one for yourself or a lot of forms and stuff that are in there. It's on homeschoolpennsylvania.org. So you can just go right out there. Mm -hmm. The PDFs are there. Yep. We just made click right on yep, it, print it out, print it out and you yeah. can just use it right there. And it's, it's always going to be there for you. So. Yeah. 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 So, um, the important thing is that you just fulfill the law like we've talked about and you keep your paperwork. Keep it's paperwork. good. I just always had a file box. I had a mm -hmm. file for each child's name mm -hmm. and just kept copies, mm -hmm. co kept copies yep. of everything yep. um, so that you have it all. But yeah. Yeah. So getting your paperwork to the school district, you have a few options. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I have a fax number that you can send to. Now, I don't know how many of us, I mean, some of our printers work with fax machines and we never got ours to work. So I know you can fax things in. People are accepting emailed, like cop, like scans of your mm -hmm. affidavit. You could email it in. Uh, you could drop off uh, at the school district office mm -hmm. or you can um, send certified mail. And I know a lot of folks out there encourage, if you're going to do the mail option, to do certified, certified mail, yes. not just regular. So you know for sure that it got to the person. Yeah. So, and that's going to be different for every school district. So contact your school district. Um, feel free to share. Like when I found out what E-Town's information was, I posted it in all the little Facebook groups that I know so that all the E-Town people know what's going on. So yeah. when you know, you might want to just share it because there's right. going to be, especially if you're in a large area, uh, that covers uh, a large, or we're kind of small, but um, just post that information out there so everybody is aware of what the contact information is for getting your paperwork in there. Yeah. And I just yeah. thought of one thing that we, we didn't touch on um, back on the affidavit. We told you that it needs to be notarized, but I noticed that sometimes there's a lot of questions around who can notarize or yeah, what, where, you know, where what, do I do that? Where do I do yeah. that? Um, well, if you are fortunate enough to have a friend that is a notary, <laughs> my husband's a notary. He can't do mine, but he likes, do to, mine. <laughs> he likes to help a lot of other families out and that's awesome. And that's great. And, yeah. um, we actually found another girl in our co-op who's a notary and we did a swap. swap. Yeah. Yay. So, um, so if, if you have a friend, a state representative, your bank, some school districts provide yeah, that service, yeah. um, but, or there's just public notaries. We, I know last year. I was running way behind. <laughs> I like to file my affidavit when I hand in everything, and that needed handed in by June 30th, everything from the previous year. Mm -hmm. So I liked it all at once, and I think it was June 30th <laughs> last year. I was like, so I just, we have a notary right in town. It was $5. So um, it doesn't break the bank. It can be an inconvenience. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so there's questions surrounding who can notarize it. So. And, that's, and there are, I mean, currently right now, they're open. Yeah. You might be yeah, doing remote open. work, but they are open. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's so, great. Yeah. So we everything. hope we cleared up any yeah. questions you may have had in regards to the affidavit and in regards to um, objectives. And if you have any questions, any comments, please drop them in there or inbox us, email us. I know what just popped into my head. We've had so many questions about what happens if my child turns six in the middle of the school year. This has come up so many times. I've had so many conversations. So I'll go over it here real quick before we're done. So... 
If you have a child that turns six, oh, car dealerships mm -hmm. for notaries. There yeah. we go. Uh, if your child turns six in the middle of the school year, what the law actually says is that you are supposed to file an affidavit for them by their birthday. That's what the law states. Now, that being said, a lot of times if you'll contact the school district and say, hey, my child turns six in the middle of the year, do you want me to file my affidavit? Many times they will say, no, just file next year. Some school districts will want that though. Yeah. So you, if you don't wanna file this year, um, you can ask if they really need to. Um, some people just don't, and they just file next year when the child is six before the beginning of the school year. But I just wanted to explain what the law actually says. Mm -hmm. And like our school district, they don't require it. So I only file when my kid child is actually six before the beginning of the school right. year. Right. So, and we had, I had a friend whose daughter turned six, or at the time it was eight, but um, like two days after the cutoff date, it was like September 10, and they she didn't need to file for that whole year. Yeah, well, and she was awesome. like, wow, that was cool. Yeah, so yeah. it really kind of depends. So you can check in with your school district. Check, yeah, check with your school district and find out what they say. But we hope we cleared up any confusion you yes. might have around this. And if there's comments, questions, please throw them out to us. And if there's something you guys want to hear about, I think this, we seem to have a lot of viewers today. So this yeah, must have been a know. hot topic. Yeah. So if there's questions that y'all have or you know that people are having out there that you keep answering that you think would be a good chatting with chat, let then, us know. Yeah, let us let know. Let us know. Yeah, yeah, we want to help you out. We sure do. Okay. Well, we will be back next Wednesday. Yes, we will. This has been Chat with, with Chap. Chap. See Bye, ya. everybody.